Hello friends, welcome back to your own channel that is we are in Techno World. So in today's video, I'm just going to tell you about the priority scheduling algorithm. Okay, as the number of algorithms I've just told you, just like uh, FCFS, SJF, SRTF, right, number of algorithms have been discussed. And even though in the previous video, I've just told you about the uh, priority scheduling algorithm, but the non-preemptive version. Right, that was the non-preemptive version. And today's video, I'm just going to tell you the preemptive version. Okay, so this is the preemptive one. And the another thing which is point, uh, which is to be noted by you people is that like higher the number, higher the priority. Means agar aapka number yaha par like bada hai. Okay, so that means aapki priority zada hai, high hai. Right, so in case of this, what you could say? You could say that P4 is having the highest priority. P4 ki priority sabse zada hai. And P1 ki priority sabse kam hai. Why so? Because the number is lower. That is 10. Okay. Now, uh, what you have to do? Like, hume yaha par find out karna hai. The completion time. Even though you have to find out the turnaround time. The waiting time is to be calculated. And the response time. Okay. And this could be done only and only by creating the GAN chart. Right. So, like for creating the GAN chart, we are having the like four processes. Right. And according to priority, we have to check like which number, which process would come first, like to which process the CPU would be allotted. Okay, so what do you do? First of all, just uh, create the GAN chart over here. Okay, and in case of GAN chart, if you could check like, sabse pehle aapka kaun sa process arrive hua? Just check it. Agar aap arrival time ko check kare, to sabse pehle aapka jo process arrive hua hai, that is P1. That is P1. So we would write P1 over here. P1 ko hum sabse pehle yaha par likhenge. Right? After that, P1, ab dekhi, jaysi ki ye preemptive version hai, to preemptive version mein, like, hamesha, kya ho sakta hai, like, only the one quantum of time CPU would be allotted. Okay? The CPU could be allotted only and only for one quantum of time. Right? Till then the new processes are coming and coming. That means only for one single quantum of time the CPU would be allotted. And as soon as, as soon as the new process would be stopped coming into the like queue, then we could take the complete time or we could take the complete burst time. We could calculate it. Okay. So, abhi humne sabse pehle yaha par kiya hai, we have taken P1 over here. Zero se aapka process P1 shuru hua hai and like ye aapka process gaya hai till one. Okay. But the remaining burst time of P1 is, after that this P1, after, like uh, between the 0 to 1, right, as you could see that P1 ka abhi jo still remaining time hai, wo kitna hai, that is 4. Abhi hamare paas 4 burst time is still left for P1, okay. After that, like between 0 to 1, 0 to 1 ke beech mein, is there any process who has been arrived? Koi hai aisa process? Yes, P2 is there. Okay, so that means P2 has been arrived. Okay, P2 a chuka hai. And only for one single quantum of time it would be allotted. Right? So that means 1 plus 1. That means it would be 2. But still we are having the remaining time that is 3. Okay. So P2 would be having the 3 remaining time. Right? After that, like between 1 to 2. Between 1 to 2, there is a new process that is P3. Okay. So we would take P3 over here. And it would run only for one quantum of time. So it would be 2 plus 1. That means 3. Okay. Now you just check. Like between 2 to 3 is there any new process? Kya aapke paas 2 to 3 mein? 2 to 3 ke beech mein kya koi naya process arrive hua hai? No. Right. The process P, P4 has been arrived at 4. It has been arrived at 4. That means. That means like right now the CPU is allotted to P3. Right, abhi aapka jo process P3 hai, like wo CPU jo hai, wo P3 ko allotted hai. That means, because there is no new process, there is no new process at 3, right, and CPU could not be sit idly in case of preemptive, right, in case of preemptive version, CPU could not sit idly, CPU idly nahi wait sakta hai. That means that P3 which the CPU is holding right now, it would be repeated, right, it would be repeated. As the like burst time for P3 was, as you could check, like P3 ka jo burst time tha, that was 2, right? And like 1 
quantum of time it has been processed right still we are having still we are having like uh, the burst time that is one so that means this p3 would be allotted again to that cpu now this would be four okay because cpu was idle at that time means uh, like uh, at that time like cpu uh, was could not be allotted to any other process because हमारे पास कोई नया प्रोसेस पहुंचा ही नहीं था दैट इज वाई ओके तो हमने P3 को भी क्या किया रिपीटेटिवली सीपीयू हैज बीन अलॉटेड एंड आफ्टर दैट इट वुड बी प्रोसेस्ड टिल फोर एंड आफ्टर दैट यू कुड चेक लाइक थ्री टू फोर के बीच में हमारे पास प्रोसेस नंबर P4 फोर अराइव हो चुका है राइट प्रोसेस नंबर P4 फोर हैज बीन अराइव एट फोर दैट मीन्स नाउ प्रोसेस नंबर P4 को सीपीयू अलॉट हो जाएगा राइट एंड लाइक What is the burst time of it? That is one quantum of time only. That means P4 B आपका completely execute हो चुका है, right? P4 is completed now, right? Process number P4 is completed now because the burst time was one, right? So it has been completed as you could say, okay? So that means process number P4 आपका complete हो चुका है, process number P3 आपका complete हो चुका है. Now only process number P1 and P2 is left. With the burst time that is four and three, right? The for process number P one, the remaining burst time is four, and for process number P two, the remaining burst time is three. Okay. Now we would check the priority, right? What is the priority of this P one? So the priority for P one is ten, and the priority for P two is twenty, right? So in the question it is given that higher the number, higher the priority. That means the higher number is twenty. Okay. So that means P two is having the highest priority. That means P2 would be like the CPU would be allotted to P2. P2 would come in the running queue, and because there is no new process who is arriving, okay, so that is why we could take the complete burst time right now. Okay, अब हम यहाँ पर जितना भी हमारा remaining burst time है उसको हम क्या कर सकते हैं running queue में ले सकते हैं. We could add it into the running queue. That means this four would be added with this. It would be nine. Okay. After that, like uh, okay, first of all, P two would be allotted, na? No? Okay, so it would be five plus three, five plus three, it would be eight. P two has been uh, completely executed. Now only P one is left, and the P one is having the remaining burst time that is four. So it would be eight plus four. That means P one would come over here, and the remaining time was four. So that is why eight plus four, it would be twelve. Okay, so this is the Gantt chart for it. Okay, so in an exam, you have to draw this Gantt chart. This Gantt chart is to be drawn by you people because only with the help of this Gantt chart you could write the completion time, right? So well, there are several methods. Where, like there is a choice whether you want to draw this ready queue or not, right? It is not mandatory. In case of the round robin scheduling, like you have to maintain this ready queue, right? But right now it is not mandatory in case of this, right? For my understanding, I am just creating this ready queue, right? If you wants to take it into your question. Then obviously you just take it. Otherwise there is no problem. Without this you could write it. Right means the remaining time you could write over here also. Okay. Okay. So you just noted down the completion time of P one. So the P one has been completed at twelve, and process number P two has been completed at eight. Process number P three has been completed at four. Process number P four completed at five. Right. Now just calculate the turnaround time, and the formula for turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. So completion time minus arrival time. So minus arrival time. That is uh, zero. So it would be twelve. Eight minus one. It would be seven. Four minus two. It would be two. Five minus four. <coughs> it would be one. Then the waiting time. The formula for waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time. Okay, so turnaround time minus burst time. Twelve minus five, it would be seven. Seven minus three, the so seven minus four. So the actual time we have to take it. Okay, so it would be three. Uh, after that, two minus two, it would be zero. One minus one, it would be zero. Okay. Then the response time is equals to the CPU first allotment time. First allotment time minus the arrival time. Okay, 
So the CPU first slot when time to P1 was 0. 0 minus 0, 0. And the CPU first slot when time to P2 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Then for P3 first allotment time is 2, 2 minus 2 it would be 0. And the P4 first allotment time that is 4, 4 minus 4 it is 0. So the response time in case of this preemptive version of priority scheduling is 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? So just like that you could find out the uh, different number of completion time, turnaround time, etc. Right? So just like that try to solve some other problems as well. Okay? And um, in case of this, like if there would be the similar priority, right? If there would be any similar priority in case of two processes or two more than two processes, then in case of that, you just note down that in case of that, you have to use FCFS algorithm, okay? FCFS algorithm, you have to use first come, first serve basis, right? So just like that, try to solve like some other problems. So this is all about the preemptive version of priority scheduling algorithm. So till then do practice of it and if you like this video kindly do comment in the below comment box and don't forget to subscribe this channel okay so thank you thank you so much